If you guys are seeing this, it means you have to found out about what Musical did. I could tell you everything he did, but I think it'd be better to show you and hear it right from the source. There will be screenshots along with this interview. My apologies for what you're about to hear. Um, I have brought on one of the people who brought forward the allegations on Musical Boy 93. And they're here to share their story because um, it's one thing to hear it in text or see it in text, but it's another thing to hear it right from the source. So without further ado, I'll let them explain. So I met Musical um, the way everybody else did through his YouTube channel. Uh, I actually emailed him a piece of fan art because I was a young, stupid 17-year-old just turned artist that wanted to, you know, show my face to my community and so i did and he responded nicely and i was like oh cool um so i started to think more about it and he loved it so that was kind of kept going but we just, we just kind of have like this friendship sort of but still like professional to an extent but still like like business casual you know like your co-work so you're not totally professional but there's still stuff you don't say right right then I give him my Twitter, and uh, I believe, no, I believe I give him my Twitter that we talk about there. And then I give him my Discord, or I give him my Discord, then my Twitter, and it was over a year ago, I don't think remember which came first, but either way, we started talking on Discord, and uh, this was before his first account got banned. One of the first messages he sent me after like a month or two of talking over email, and this was like not even consistently talking, but he knew that I was a minor at the time, which by the way, um, the law doesn't care if it's the age of consent is 16 in your country. If it's online, the age of consent is 18, it's still illegal. Um, just a little PSA for those thinking about it. Uh, so one of the first messages he sends me uh, after we get on Discord is one that he is uh, allegedly engaged to be married to a man. And uh, after that, I'm like, okay, whatever, didn't really ask. And then after, it's like, I, I remember it distinctly, I was in the kitchen, like, deep frying some fucking cheese sticks, and he sends me, and I quote, kisses you on the mouth with like little asterisks. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then that's kind of where it started. And after that, like, first thing, I was like, yo, what the fuck? And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. And he sort of guilted me into apologizing for making him feel upset that he made me uncomfortable. And that that's going to be a recurring thing for relationship. But that's how it all started. And I'd say that was late July, early August. Of was that of twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two? Twenty twenty one. All right. Um, I am no longer in contact. So, yeah, as you guys can see from the screenshots, um, it's the messages go back and forth. Obviously, the names are blurred um, for the sake of this, and graphic images will not be shared, but. It is pretty disgusting and genuinely is appalling to see. Um, I guess uh, the next following question is, what do you have any sort of advice for dealing with these kind of people now that you've dealt with this yourself? Just kind of like, a, hey, how do you get yourself out of the situation or at the very least, like how to avoid it? Well, this is actually not the first time I've been groomed by a pedophile. Unfortunately, I just had bad luck when it comes to this, I guess. Because uh, my my last act, actually, before, just right after, right before, was a convicted pedophile felon who was uh, wanted by the police for multiple, like, physical assault. Not, like, sexual assault, but, like, physically 
assaulting crimes. So like, yeah, that, that was not fun. Uh, generally speaking, know the signs and don't ignore them. If they're making you apologize for their behavior, block them. That shit is not normal. If they're older than you and confiding in you, it's not because they trust you. It's not because they love you. It's not because they think you're mature for your age. It's because no one their own age will deal with their bullshit. If they were a really good person, they wouldn't be indulging their lifelong traumas or whatever bullshit excuse they give you to a minor. You are not a therapist. You are a child. If somebody older than you is acting the way you see here, I don't care if it's just a role play, if it's just OCs, it starts out like that. It always starts out that way. Just don't engage with it to begin with. If you see something, say something. If you notice that your friend is becoming more withdrawn, if you hear them lying about their age on the internet and like you see them talking to older people on the internet confront them it always starts with a little white lie and it come usually comes from the abuser and then you start lying for them you will not believe the amount of lies i've told my friends and family just and it wasn't even because they asked like invasive questions but generally speaking, the, the biggest sign to tell if you're in this kind of relationship is if you find yourself lying just because you don't want them to know the truth. Because if they knew that if your friends or your family knew the truth, you feel like you would get in trouble or you feel like they would judge you. I didn't tell my partner at the time his real age because I was scared of what she would think of me. I told my parents he was a friend from England that my friend, like, he was a friend of a friend that we got in contact with. I didn't tell my mom and dad that I was talking to a 28-year-old man on the internet because I knew that was wrong. You inherently know it's wrong. It's not, it's not good to be around people you have to lie about. Anybody, be it them a pedophile or your friend. If you are forced to lie about them to other people to make sure they look good, they're not a good person. 100% agree. Um, and I think that was really finely said. Um, Do you have any more questions about the relationship or whatnot? So, did he, did he ever make you feel uncomfortable? uncomfortable yes absolutely um a lot of the time i would feel like i had to like be sexual with him in order to get his attention or get his affection because the only time he paid attention to me was when i was um engaging with him sexually and like not to be graphic or detailed or whatever you can work so if you want but it was like we only did what he, like, it was never, it was never about anybody else but himself. It's in that, in, like, sexual stuff and in the relationship, it was always about me. And whenever he did pretend to care about me, it was always, I love you so much, I'm so sorry, I'm such a piece of shit. Which always turned it back to me comforting him, telling him he's not. So I always felt uncomfortable telling him my boundaries. Because he always turn it on himself and make him the victim. Which is like classic narcissist behavior. Yeah, that's that's definitely um, not how you should at all approach a relationship, right? Um, yeah, no. And I guess another question I have is like, if you guys got into arguments, how did that look? Like, how were those resolved? Oh, it was everything. Um, like in the uh, warning thing I sent in the circuit, uh, we got into a slight disagreement of religion. Me just saying, oh, I'm a and whatever. He is another religion. It's not that. And he accused me of being likened to the Ku Klux Klan because I'm a religion. 
Which, yeah, that's that's horrible. No one, no one should call anybody that they're that they're from that. That's horrible. Um, and with like normal fights, normal fights, it was. I would say something. Like it was always my fault. It was always my fault. I would call him out, or I would say something, and he would just immediately end the call, or immediately stop talking to me. And he wouldn't talk to me for hours on end. And I told him multiple times, the silent treatment really fucks with me. This does not work for me, and it is the worst thing you could ever do. Don't do this. And he agreed, and he was like, I understand. But every single time, it was always my fault, and he would always give me the silent treatment for hours and hours and hours on end. The first time he did it, I thought he committed suicide. Like, he didn't answer me until the next day, and there was, like, 16 missed calls, 80 missed messages, because I thought he was, like, committing suicide, because he had told me, allegedly, that he had tried to commit suicide, which, like, I totally don't believe in him. Which, like, so, because if he did commit suicide, I'm out of sympathy. Because you, you lose my respect as a human being when you start grooming children. Like, the, I'm, it's hate to be harsh but the world would be better without the world would definitely just be better without this guy i i couldn't do that if he actually was but he would use that against me because he knew that um i had been struggling with suicide and depression and self-harm and stuff he knew that that was like a big trigger for me so he would make me feel like he was in danger to get my attention and make him feel like he was special. And then he would finally talk back to me after like six months. And he'd make it be like, it was my fault. Like, I'm sorry, you just made me so angry. And it, it was always my fault. Always, no matter what. And I always apologized. It would always be my fault, never his fault. I should have known better. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And yeah, that's just, it's just one of those things where it's horrible and he definitely should not have done that. Um, that's just what, what you don't do in a relationship, period. Like, a healthy relationship is acknowledging that both sides of a wrong, or there is no right or wrong. I'm in a healthy relationship now. I am in a beautiful relationship where we are honest and open and communicative. This is, and you know what? Every day I think this is nothing like the relationship I have. I feel genuinely loved here. I feel seen and loved and non exploited. I don't feel gross about my body. He loved to talk about I feel so gross every single day. He wouldn't shut up about me. You know, and that's a really horrible thing. And it's really good that you decided to come on an interview with me. I'm really happy that you decided to do this and have this conversation um, and be able to tell, you know, your side of this story. And, and uh, it, it was terrible. I, I just remembered another thing about, you know, despite, despite what he says, he... Uh, his boyfriend that he had before me, which, by the way, I wasn't even his quote-unquote real boyfriend. I was just the man he was cheating on his boyfriend with. So, like, damn. But anyways, he wanted... Because me and that boy were both... We're, we are both um, trans. And he wanted to impregnate us with four children. He wanted a four family... He wanted a four children house. When I've, I've talked to the guy, I've, I've talked to the boyfriend... He was, I, I talked to him about that too, and he was like, yeah, that made me extremely uncomfortable, and I never liked that, and it made me feel so gross. And I was like, same, dude. So he made, he objectified us and made us feel like our body wasn't ours. Like, he wanted those children, whether we wanted them or not, you know? And he was always pressuring us to have children. When, like, I told him pregnancy is a trauma for me, I don't want kids. And he was like, oh, yeah, no, that's fine. But then he'd keep bringing it up. Like, I want I want a child with you. I want to marry you. I want to move you out to England and um, provide a home for you. 
Um, that's just really disgusting behavior that he shows. And that's also, while you were saying that, I'm just, I'm just recoiling over here in a little bit of ew. Um, yeah, it's my body, my choice. These aren't your kids. My body will never hold, hold his children. Let's, let's just be honest. He's just a big man-child incel who can't take it when he doesn't get what he wants. And what he wants is little AFAB's nudes. Because all of his exes are AFAB. He just wants pictures of underage boobs and underage vagina. Because he's a pedophile. And you know what? You know who is the most vulnerable of those groups? Trans men. He is, ex he is exploiting a vulnerable group. Because women are already vulnerable. AFABs are socialized into not saying no. They think it's rude to say no. Like, think of all the media. It's rude to turn a guy down. He mustered up all that courage. It's rude to tell a man no when he asks you to prom. He worked so hard on that prom poster. It's rude to deny him children because he loves you. You know, it's a, it's a slippery slope. Right. It's, it's just, so, it's, it's gross. And it's one of those things where it's like, you just got to take a step back and go, what? Um, but anyway, getting, getting back on topic. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank you for coming on this stream or not stream the video interview. <laughs> no worries. And I want, I'm really happy that you gave me this side. Um, and I'm really happy you did this. And I just, before we ended, I just wanted to ask if you had any final um, things to say. Yeah, I do. Now, I, I know he's going to be listening to this. So this is just a personal message for him. Hey, you know who I am. And you know exactly why I'm doing this. Burn in hell, bitch. You know who sent this. I'm still thinking about pressing charges. I have all the evidence. You can't hide. Statute of limitations doesn't apply overseas. Nor does it apply in the UK for sexual crimes against a minor. This and many more is what you were accused of and what I have evidence of you doing. Don't think I won't press charges. You have fallen from grace and I will be the one that takes you down. Bye-bye, Angel. Burn in hell.